Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne video. Today we're going to be exploring the differences between the light bowgun and the heavy bowgun. This is going to be a new series of seven videos I put out where we're comparing two of the most similar weapon classes against each other and talking about why you might use one over the other or what I like about one weapon class over the other, right? And we're going to be starting off with the light bowgun and the heavy bowgun because, you know, they're quite similar to each other and they, they actually do have more distinctions in Iceborne than they used to have in Monster Hunter World, okay? So Monster Hunter World, the base game, we you've done probably all your comparisons already, but in Iceborne, the weapons are even more different. So I thought this would be a fun time to maybe cover some of the changes to the weapons, but also cover, again, why you might choose one over the other. So why don't we start by taking a look a little bit at the light bow guns. One of the changes that happened in Iceborne, the biggest change, is we all have clutch claw attacks, right? And the light bow gun, the clutch claw attack's always the same. When you grab, you've got the weapon attack, and here it is. You like stick a wyvern blast onto the monster and then you shoot it off. And then this is going to count as one of the light weapons that drops a pod, which means you have to grab onto the monster twice. So we're gonna grab onto the monster a second time. We're gonna shoot it and this will cause the part to be softened, right? And now you can see it's softened. So it's gonna take bonus damage. We'll shoot it with the, I believe I have this build set up for shot, uh, normal shot ammo. Yeah, it's not bad, right? Whereas with the heavy bow gun, you will only need to grab the monster once and this will cause an immediate softening of the part, but no no pods will drop. So the heavy bowgun's a heavy weapon that causes a softening in one move, and the light bowguns are a light weapon where you need to attack twice to get a softened part, but you get the pods, right? Well, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's always two different versions of the, uh, two different types of the clutch claw mechanics for that, right? All right, so another thing that the light bowgun is very different about from uh, compared to the heavy bowgun is how it sheaths. Okay, so the heavy bowgun is known for having the slowest sheath speed in the game by actually a pretty fair amount. Here you can see when I have the light bowgun and I want to sheath it, boop, it just goes right on my back. So that's actually a big deal. Why? Because if you want to play a wide range healer, which you generally do for, let's say the extreme behemoth, he's a great example. He's a tough fight. He's a tough monster still, even in master rank. And if you want to play the wide range healer, you can do so even better when you're using a weapon like the light bowgun, because you can kind of chill back, he's doing his thing. You don't have to get close to him, you can chill back and get good damage on the extreme behemoth. And then when someone needs to heal, you just put the weapon away right away, and then you eat whatever it is you're gonna eat. You can see this is actually a wide range healer build. So there's wide range five, there's speed eating three, uh, and free meal is on the build as well. So this is actually just uh, the, the build I used to use on extreme behemoth, except for master rank, that's all this is. So you can see I'm just drinking that real fast. Mega demon drug. Give everyone a buff, right? You would use, uh, what do I have? <laughs> You'd use your demon powder. Should have might seed in here somewhere. I probably don't. I probably don't have the right item loadout. Okay, so we've covered two differences between the light bowgun and the heavy bowgun. One of the differences is you need to attack twice to soften apart. See, if you attack once, it's not going to be enough. That's one. The other difference is that the sheath speed between the two weapons is very different. Light bowguns sheath very quickly, which is good for wide range. The heavy bowguns sheath very slowly. Okay, so that's a very important difference. The next the next difference I'd say is when the weapon's actually out, so we have the weapon drawn here, your walk speed's really good. See, you got a nice fast walk speed. This is important because when you're strafing, generally the monster misses. With the heavy bowgun, the walk speed's very slow. Right, so the heavy bowgun is similar to the lance and the gun lance in, in the way that it, it walks very slowly when you have it unsheathed, when you have it drawn. With the light bowgun, you're nice and fast. What does that matter? It's because you can kind of stand here doing this, right? You can, uh, let's use the slice ammo real fast. It doesn't have the high recoil. Here it is. So you can kind of chew. Oh, it has the right. Oh, I skipped over it. Hold on. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. Here we go. So with the slice ammo, you can see that I'm strafing around the monster while we're shooting. Reload, same deal. This is actually very, very important for the light bowgun. It's one of the main ways that it distinguishes itself from the heavy bowgun in combat. With the heavy bowgun, your your strafing speed is too slow. So you're going to end up getting hit by the monster unless you put on a shield mod, which is another distinguishing factor between the two weapons. So where the light bowgun kind of moves quickly and strafes around the monster's attacks and outspaces the monster's attacks, the heavy bowgun has to use its shield or it has to iframe through an attack. Now they both also have a different role. The light bowgun has a very fast, small roll, and the heavy bowgun is going to have a long roll. Don't worry, we'll be taking a look at all of that stuff on the heavy bowgun in a moment. We'll swap weapons in a moment. 
All right, so we've we've covered quite a lot. The walking speed is different. The roll is different. Uh, the special ammo is different. So heavy bow guns and light bow guns have something called special ammo. You can see it here. The special ammo is wyvern blast. All light bow guns have the same special ammo. You push B, boop, puts this thing in the ground, and a monster can activate it by attacking it, or you can set it off yourself. Let me show you. Get this closer to the cart. We'll put it down. And when we shoot over it, we'll actually activate it. See? So you get the damage from the shot, and you get the damage from the wyvern ammo as well, the wyvern blast. Set this off. We can melee it. <laughs> so the special ammo types are different because on the heavy bow gun you get wyvern snipe and you get wyvern heart ammo. So those are two very different special ammo types compared to the light bow gun. Now, I like the wyvern blast because it charges up and what you can do is when a monster goes to sleep you can pile all that wyvern blast up at the monster and then when the monster is being woken up the wyvern blast goes off at the same time. It's also very easy to use. It's a very low commitment uh, special ammo. You just push, in my case, the B button. I believe it's O on the PlayStation controller. You just push B or O while the weapon's drawn and it gets planted in the ground there. So you can place it very quickly and get back to straf strafing. So there it is, it's down, get back to strafing. Whereas with the heavy bow gun, when you load the special ammo, it actually takes a long time to load that. And it can be risky business to kind of load that in the middle of a fight. Plus you're not dealing damage during the reload of the special ammo for the heavy bow gun. So the damage output of the special ammo on the heavy bow guns is tempered by the fact that you're not able to load that special ammo very quickly. Imagine trying to load it and then being interrupted by the monster, for example. Okay, so Wyvern Blast is cool and it's distinct to the light bow guns. Okay, and then after that, things start to get a little more complex between, between the two weapon classes. When we go over here, we're going to start taking a look now at the actual ammo types. <laughs> Explosions going off over there. All right, here we are. So you'll notice I popped out this extra menu that shows a lot of information about what. How, the type of, uh, you can see down at the bottom of the second menu, it says rapid fire or single fire, right? So there's there's these special attributes to the ammo types that'll decide if they'll have these properties when they're firing. In this case, it says rapid fire on the water ammo. Let's take a look at rapid fire because rapid fire is a unique attribute to the light bowguns. So here we have the water ammo and the thunder ammo. Back in the base game, the stick light bowgun, which is what I'm holding, it was like, it was really well known for being the best weapon you could use or maybe the easiest weapon you could use against Kulf Roth to make her shed her mantle. You would shoot her with thunder ammo. It's probably still gonna be the case uh, that this this particular light bowgun is probably still going to be some of the best light bowguns for water ammo and thunder ammo. Uh, I did a whole bunch of comparisons between the light bowguns, and the fact that this one has spare shot built in is a big advantage to it. So here it is with the thunder ammo, and you can see when I fire it, it takes three shots. That's the rapid fire. It takes three shots at a time per bullet. That's the rapid fire, and essentially what rapid fire is doing is it, when I compare it, between all the ammo types. Let's say you have rapid fire normal ammo two, normal ammo level two, and you, you, you're, you're getting rapid fire on the shots. You compare it to normal ammo three, they're doing roughly the same damage. So what's interesting about rapid fire is it's, it's basically taking the damage output of your ammo level to the next level. Uh, now there is no second level to using elemental ammo types. So really you're just concluding it does more damage, right? Let's check that out. We like it. We also like, when, when we're trying to deal elemental damage, we like a, a elemental damage that does rapid attacks. And the fact that you're getting three procs right there, that's good. That's good for your elemental damage. In short, the rapid fire is just adding more damage to that ammo type. And it's exclusive to the light bow guns. All right, let's go ahead and jump back. All right, jump over here. What else do the light bow guns do exclusively? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a downside to using the light bow guns when it comes to the ammo types compared to the heavy bow guns. They typically struggle with normal pierce and spread. They typically will not have as powerful of damage output between those three shot types. And then it's sort of true, it used to be true with the sticky. I think the sticky ammo is actually quite good on the light bow guns, but the light bow guns are lacking cluster ammo. Cluster ammo is really a high damage dealing ammo type for the heavy bow guns, and they're also missing the wyvern ammo. The wyvern ammo is really good. I'm a big fan of the wyvern ammo. Those are exclusive to the heavy bow guns as well. So there's some exclusive ammo types that they miss out on. All right. So my final thoughts on the light bow gun is 
They're well known for doing good elemental damage on elemental damage builds. Those are extra effective against large monsters. Monsters that have big bodies where the elemental ammo can travel through the monster body for multiple procs of damage. Light bow guns are a low commitment weapon with good strafing, generally easier to dodge with, right? Uh, and they're capable of building wide range, which is really nice. Big fan of the wide range. Other than that, you generally find yourself dealing more damage with certain heavy bow guns. Let's run over to the heavy bow guns. So it's time to start talking about, well, oh, one more deal. I almost forgot about this. When we choose customize bow gun, let's choose a quick real fast. The light bow guns get this special mod called evading reload. So the heavy bow guns are not getting evading reload. This is unique to the light bow guns. It's one of the changes they made just for Iceborne. Okay, and what you can see is, let's go ahead and reload this real fast. When we fire this, you can use your evade to reload the weapon, see? And this is unique to the light bow guns, and it is, it's very interesting because it can replace the need to build a reload on your, your custom mods, right? So you can get the reload mod going, or you can just build evade reload. And you can run into situations on the light bow guns where you don't worry about building ammo up, your free element ammo up on the build. So you don't worry about it because you just take evade reload. So this is something I find interesting about the light bogans as well. Boop, look at that. Just reloading. So let's go ahead and grab a heavy bogan now. Heavy bogans, let's see. We'll grab a heavy bogan build. How about Loyal Thunder? It's a good one, right? It's my Loyal Thunder build where I have Tool Specialist. Uh, the reason Tool Specialist is so much fun on this weapon is because you can take the KO mantle and then just constantly be, or I, what's it called actually? It's not called the KO mantle, impact mantle. And you can constantly be causing KOs. So here's where it's going to out damage the light bow guns right here. So we've got special ammo three. Uh, the special ammo, we got spread ammo three. The special ammo is wyvern heart. And what you can see right away, let's go ahead and grab this guy. We're going to grab this guy. He's the monster. We're going to soften the monster in one move. All right, so we're done with that. We did it in one move, which is really convenient. And now we're just gonna go crazy on him with this spread shot. Look how much ammo is in this clip of spread shot. That's spread ammo three. And uh, what is that, like eight shots? Just crazy, look how much damage that's dealing. None of the light bow guns can compete with that. So just in terms of pure damage, you're just out damaging them, it's a fact. Yeah, it's going to outplay it right there. Here's the Wyvern Heart. I'll be sure to show you the Wyvern Snipe as well. Wyvern Hearts are very damaging, but you have to have a monster who sits still for a long time in order to take most advantage of it. So you just aim it here. So it's an ammo type where you do more damage if you focus on that one part of the monster's body. But look at the total damage on the left there. Look at that. Wow, nearly 4,000 damage from that really really nuts okay so right off the bat what you see with the heavy bow guns is that you're dealing a lot more damage with the spread ammo you've got the wyvern heart which is very different from wyvern blast i really do like wyvern blast and i think it would have been cool to have it on some heavy bow guns just like i think some of the light bow guns would have been cool with wyvern snipe and wyvern heart but they're exclusive special ammo types for these different weapon classes and that's okay it's not too big of a problem here's the cluster bombs this is only cluster bomb level two we'll try out cluster bomb level three in a minute so starting with the heavy bow guns, we're taking a look at the different ammo types while we're while we're getting started. Here's the wyvern ammo. So wyvern ammo is used as a wake up. It's an explosive ammo type, and it has a long charge time, but it hits really hard. You can see we have three shots of that with this heavy bow gun too. Isn't that crazy? So this build isn't designed to do more damage with the wyvern ammo, but we'll show you a build that is set up to do that. Uh, yeah, so this is this is a terrific spread ammo heavy bow gun. Oh, you know what? Here's another thing exclusive to the heavy bow guns. You see this? This is called the special scope. And what happens is it forces you to look through a scope. You get tunnel vision, but if you can get in the if you can get your range for your ammo type in the critical range while you've got the special scope attached, you're going to get an even larger damage bonus. I, I can't remember what it is. Is it like 30% more? I don't think it's 30. That's too much. Some large amount. It might have been 10, actually. So let's go ahead and attach the special scope real fast. Light bow guns do not get this mod. Okay, so we're getting this because of a mod. It's an exclusive heavy bow gun mod. Let's get this in the right range. So you can see, as we step back and forward, 
the reticle actually moves until it lines up with the stationary reticle, and that's when you're in the correct range. Ooh, and we went from 40 to 53, which is um, pretty good. <laughs> that's a lot of bonus damage. So again, that's something that the heavy bow guns do exclusively. The light bow guns don't do that. You can see my sheath time is very slow. We're gonna grab a different heavy bow gun to give you more demonstrations. That was Loyal Thunder. Hmm. Let's do this one right here. Oh, right, that's my Klazuka build. <laughs> no, no, we'll go with this here. Okay, so I want to demonstrate to you another thing that the heavy bow guns do exclusively better than the light bow guns. We have the cluster bomb ammo, and cluster bomb ammo has always been known to be too strong, basically, and it's, it's still in the game and it's still very strong. Speaking of which, this heavy bow gun uses the other heavy bow gun special ammo, Wyvern Snipe. Let's go ahead and load that up and I'll show that off first. So Wyvern Snipe travels through the body of the monster and it explodes for all the places that it procced. It's kind of like pierce ammo that explodes. Just shoot that real fast. Procced four times, four explosions, and they get stronger. All right, and that did like 800 damage there, did it? Look at that, 800 damage. And this isn't even designed for that. Now this is the real reason you use this heavy bowgun though, the cluster bombs. Check this out. This is the Magda Gametis heavy bowgun. In fact, in the base game, this was so strong, people called it overpowered. Look at this. So this is the real reason you're using heavy bow guns as well. I showed you the spread ammo. That is the cluster bomb ammo. Look how fast it reloads too. It's a good reload speed. Similarly, you, once you're out of the cluster bomb ammo, like you've gone through your reserves, you can roll up and use this as well. And none of the hit zone values matter. When you're using explosive damage types, the ex uh, explosive damage types ignore his own values. So it doesn't matter if you've softened the monster or not. You can just go nuts on the monster right away. And that's kind of a bonus in Iceborne. It's kind of like a sneaky bonus because in Iceborne, for a lot of the usual weapons that are using crit boost and they're using, you know, crit eye, weakness exploit, and they're, they're dealing sever damage or shot damage or blunt damage, you know, you have to hit a specific monster part to get the best damage output. Uh, it's not true with explosive damage, you just kind of go crazy on any part of the monster's body, right? It's 500 damage per shot, really not too bad. Here's the sleep ammo, and that's one of the things we like about bow guns in general. Both light bow guns and heavy bow guns come with the, uh, it comes with the ailment ammo, and the ailment ammos are really good at controlling when a monster goes to sleep and when a monster gets paralyzed. This is something that's not true if you use an ailment melee weapon. It just kind of happens randomly after a few hits, right? You don't have as much control, but the, the bow guns do a really terrific job with the elements. And look at this. True Razor Spare Shot is giving me all kinds of bonus shots in that sleep ammo. Isn't that nice? That's almost too good because the monster goes to sleep and then you wake the monster up with this Wyvern ammo for big bonus damage, right? You get bonus damage on the wake up. See? You wake them up like that. So, Similar to the previous heavy bow gun that I showed you, this heavy bow gun is just dealing much more damage than what the light bow guns are capable of. Light bow guns don't have access to cluster bombs, and they don't have access to wyvern ammo either. All right, let's try another one. Here's a normal ammo loadout. Oh, okay, this is kind of a defensive build. We'll grab this special scope. Dude. All right, so we got our special scope on. So let's say you wanted to do a normal ammo build, what would you rather do it on, light bow gun or heavy bow gun? There's different, you can do it on either weapon class, right? You don't have to, you don't have to use one over the other. But the fact that the heavy bow guns are coming with this special scope is giving you that bonus damage. So let's, we're in the critical range, right? This, uh, is it called like special critical range? Whatever the case is, we've gotten these bars to line up, right? See, it's, it's glowing now. Now we're gonna get the bonus damage per shot. And look at this damage, 200. Look how fast we're firing. Very fast, right? And once again, the light bow guns are just going to struggle with that. I've experimented with various light bow gun builds for normal ammo three. The problem is you usually have to deal with smaller clips of ammo. So like for this heavy bow gun, you can see I have seven shots of that normal ammo three. That's a lot. Seven shots, we've got the special scope on, barely any recoil. Look how fast we're shooting. We're shooting really fast, right? So light bow guns just aren't going to compare with that. They're not going to be able to do that. But what are the trade-offs between these two weapons? Well, as we mentioned before, you're really not going to be using any kind of serious wide-range setup with the heavy bow guns. Look how slow it sheets. 
Look at that. That's a long sheath animation. Even even bringing it back out, drawing it takes a while, right? Look look at this. That takes a long time. That's a big deal. Like let's say you need to use a dive evade. If you needed to use a dive evade, it would take you a very long time to reach a point where you could actually use it because you have to sheath your weapon entirely before you can get the dive evade out. So the heavy bowguns just have a little more pressure on them than the light bowguns do. Also, once again, you'll notice the walking speed is much slower than the light bowgun was. The walking speed with heavy bowgun, it just takes longer. So there's more risk that you get caught up in something. You can't just escape anything. Uh, the roll is also... It's, it's fun in some ways. I like it in some ways. Like, look how much you travel with the roll. I like that you can travel so much. And you can put on evade roller to go even further. Evade extender, I mean. Uh, however, one of the problems with the roll is how long it lasts. Look how long I'm stuck in that roll. There's like this extra little lunge at the end, end of the end of the roll, right? That extra little lunge, it just keeps you in the animation. And you can't do anything until the whole animation is over. So... You, if, if you're trying to iframe through a monster's attack, you kind of have to hope that that's the only attack they're going to use. They're not going to like combo off of it really quickly or else you're still going to get hit. So in short, limited mobility, longer sheath times. Uh, unfortunately, one of the reasons why I think that the heavy bow guns still win out in the end is because the heavy bow guns have this exclusive mod. Let me show you. So they get, they get the special scope. But they get the shield mod too, and if you've used heavy bow guns, you you already knew this, of course. The shield mods are a big deal. Yeah, the shield mods are a big deal because they're actually quite good. If you just put on guard up, and that's the that's the skill that allows you to guard virtually all the moves in the game, and then you put on even just a little bit of the guard skill, and that's the one that reduces the amount of stamina it costs in order to guard a move. You just put on a little bit of guard up, a little bit of guard. And you're dealing with a really solid shield on this setup, similar to the Lance and the Gun Lance even, uh, while having all of the damage and all of the range. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the Heavy Bowgun. One of the earliest weapons I used was the Lance. Yeah, I played the Lance. The Lance officially was the first weapon I learned how to use in Monster Hunter. Eventually, I moved over to the Heavy Bowgun because I started to realize the Heavy Bowgun's kind of like a Lance, but with much greater range. So look, I'm, I'm way back here. Look at that. Lance would never reach this. I'm way back here shooting the monster in the face, safe. And if the monster gets close to me, I still have the shield. Okay. Also, I realized we did not mention something about the light bow guns. I'm sure some of you did not watch the whole video. Some of you stopped early. Here we go. Let's jump back to the sticks. So you probably left a comment, but haha, -ha, I actually caught it before we wrapped up. So the light bow guns have an exclusive mod called the Wyvern Blast mod. So here's Wyvern Heart and Wyvern Snipe. That's for the heavy bow guns. And the light bow guns have Wyvern Blast mod. So you get Wyvern Blast Type 2. And now they're they're a reaction very reactionary special ammo. It does a lot more damage, the Wyvern Blast, but you must throw it into the monster's attack. So check it out. It, it fires kind of like an ammo, and I feel like that's the best way to think of it. All right, so you can see it fired like an ammo. It, it doesn't have a lot of trajectory, it just kind of, you know, just kind of lands right in front of you. Uh, if you're aiming down, it's very close to you. You get a little, your character rolls backwards, and I suspect that roll has an iframe to it. I believe it does. Uh, but the thing is, if the monster hits that Wyvern Blast, it deals like 400 damage. It's nuts. So you can get 1,200 damage if you land all three of the Wyvern Blasts into the monster's attacks, right? The Wyvern Blast counters is what I've been calling them. All right, so those are all the main difference between the light bow guns and the heavy bow guns. Light bow guns are gonna have rapid fire, but in general, they're gonna have smaller ammo clips. They're probably not gonna get out as much damage as the heavy bow gun, with some exceptions. Primarily, I think they do better with sticky ammo and elemental ammo types. Uh, and you're going to be using these for your healer builds, right? So it's it's nice to be able to use something like elemental ammo and a healer build, or you could be using normal ammo and a healer build like I have here. And the heavy bow guns, you would go over to them if you kind of want to be a heavier bruiser type of build and really knock the monster out sooner, but you have much more limited mobility and definitely you're not going to be playing healer with this. I mean, you still get like some recovery ammo types. Let's see if we can find one with recovery. I play both weapon types, light bow gun and heavy bow gun. Let's see. Does this have any recovery? Show me one. Uh, here, this one has recovery. 
So what's nice about the heavy bowgun, let me mention this, both weapons, both weapon classes come with recovery ammo. And with the heavy bowgun, if you're not going to be playing a healer, you could keep in mind that you can bring your recovery ammo, and if you shoot this at your teammate and hit them with it, it will give them back their health. So keep that in mind. It'll help you with being able to play support at least a little bit. You also got this trank ammo, which is fun. Trank ammo will allow you to capture a monster without having to put your weapon away if the monster walks into the trap. They're both really terrific weapons. In the base game, I primarily found myself using the light bowgun when I wanted to play healer. And the other time I found myself playing Light Bowgun is when we fought Cove to Roth. So whether or not I use the Light Bowgun so much in Iceborne may depend on whether we get another monster with a huge body like that. But also one of the main times I've been using Light Bowguns in Monster Hunter World is when I want to use Sticky Ammo because it's really not bad for Sticky Ammo right now. So let's grab our Sticky Ammo setup. Is this it? Here it is. We're going to grab this real fast. And there's a variety of ways to build the Sticky Ammo up. There's a variety of ways. Uh, this build in particular is using true spare shot, but you can actually go spare shot and artillery five. So here we are with sticky ammo three. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to set this up. I've seen competing build styles. This is the build style I preferred. And you can see it's firing it, the ammo fairly well. It's nice when the true spare shot activates multiple times. Look at this, see? You're real far away from the monster, right? The monster is eventually going to turn aggro to you. What I do is I put down my Wyvern Blast and I just kind of stand next to it. So the Wyvern Blast is here and I'm just kind of waiting for the monster to run into me when I set that down. And I just get back to doing this. You don't have to worry about softening the monster at all. You just keep shooting and shooting and shooting indiscriminately. You kind of aim for the head if you can. Oop, we're getting too far back here. Kind of aim for the head if you can because you'll cause KOs for your team. And for yourself actually. Yeah, so that's my favorite playstyle for the light bowguns right now is actually sticky ammo. In the base game, you couldn't really, you didn't really use the sticky ammo quite so much. You had the Devil Joe light bowgun, which could use sticky ammo, but it wasn't as good as the Dark Devourer for sticky ammo. So the heavy bowguns just outclassed the light bowguns for sticky ammo. But in Iceborne, that's not true. The, the light bowguns can actually use the sticky ammo pretty well. Yeah, arguably better than the Heavy Bowgun so far, but I need to do a test with the Magda Gametis Heavy Bowgun to compare it. Uh, the Magda Gametis might be the best Bowgun in the game for Sticky Ammo. We'll have to see. <laughs> I'm having fun here. All right, and that's my comparison of the Light Bowgun to the Heavy Bowgun. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know what you thought of both weapons. If you asked me which one I preferred, it would be the Heavy Bowgun just because of the damage. And uh, yeah, Cluster Bombs are still in the game. For those of you who didn't know that, Cluster Bombs are still working. Mostly because of true spare shot. Cluster Bombs are still working. You combine those with the Wyvern ammo now. All right, let's get the wave going. Hey, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.